Well, good morning. Glad that you're here. Um, we are uh, going to continue our uh, series on stewardship and, uh, and 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 good stewardship. And uh, we we've uh, we we've uh, been talking about uh, good stewardship and, and and really that what stewardship just means is you know being in charge of the things that I've put in charge of. And so we're talking about uh, godly stewardship. And so we, we've spent uh, two weeks uh, prior to this. So we've talked about um, salvation, then time and how we spend our time. And today we're going to talk about engagements, um, the things that we do. Uh, before we uh, uh, move on from there, though, uh, let's, uh, let's get started with a word of prayer, shall we? Father God, we thank you for all that you're doing, Lord, and we pray, Lord, that you'll continue to work in us, to to strengthen us, to build us up so that we may go out and serve you, Lord. God, uh, I I praise you for everything, and we pray these things in your son's precious name, amen. So as we we continue through our, our our, our acronym here, and, and we're looking at uh, being a good steward and being a good steward of, of these things and talked about salvation and, and time and, and, and devoting our time. Engagements is going to kind of fit in there right with time and how we spend our time. Um, in Colossians chapter 3, we, we have this passage of Scripture. It says, And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to him, or giving thanks to God the Father through him. Before we move on, I I want us to to look at that, uh, because what Paul says to the the church is that in, in whatever we're doing, in whatever we do, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father and through Him. Now, this is um, this is uh, directed at a church, and 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 so he, he's talking to the church, but he's talking to us as individuals as well. Now, I, I told you last week that um, uh, that how we spend our time. You know, and, 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 I, and I told you that, that I have a problem with this, uh, that if I, especially in ministry, if, I, if, I, if there's something that I know I should be doing or something that I, I should be doing, is it okay for me to take just some time and, and, and watch a movie or, or to, to do something that I like, um, to, to invest in a habit, or a habit, a hobby, that's where I was trying to go with that. If you want to invest in a habit, I guess, but uh, uh, no, invest in a hobby um, and, and to do just to take time for myself. Is, is that wrong? And, and, and I said, I don't I don't think that it is. I, I mean, Jesus, he took time away from everyone else. He took time away from ministry uh, to, to recoup, to, to do some things. Um, we, we even see Paul, you know, he, he's not always. Uh, down arguing uh, his point um, he, he takes time for himself um, and, and and so is, is it okay for us to do this and we, we were talking about that and, uh, and I, I think it is fine for us to do that just as long as uh, you know we, we, we are we are devoting our time we are in devotion to certain things that we are focused on certain things and this is going to go along with that in our engagements, the things that we do. And he says, so whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give thanks to God the Father and through Him. And so I want to just spend some time on on looking at that in, in what, everything that we do. So I want to look at uh, a few things. And, and the first one is this. What we do should be done in Jesus. So what we do should be done in Jesus. In John chapter 15, 
verse 5, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown aside like a branch and he withers. They gather them, throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this, that you produce much fruit and prove to be my disciples. And so what I want to to focus on out of that is Jesus asks us to remain in him and he in us. And when we do, we will produce good fruit. And so our engagements are about fruit, producing good fruit. Everything we do should be centered on remaining in Jesus. Okay, so when we, when we look at what Jesus was saying about the vine and the branches, I am the vine, you are the branches, okay? The branches produce fruit, but the vine brings the nourishment, right? Okay, so if, if you, uh, if you um, uh, have raised grapes or, um, or um, cucumbers, I say cucumbers because we had cucumbers once in a garden. Probably the only thing that I couldn't kill. Okay? We planted cucumbers not really knowing what was going to happen. Okay? And so we planted a lot of them. And I think those things ran a mile away from our house. I mean, we were pulling up vines, and so you got this long branch, then all these little branches, so you got this long vine, and then these little branches, and, uh, and, and, and on those little branches, that's where you get the, the cucumber, the fruit of it, and, and what comes off of it. And so, and it produces good fruit, and we had good cucumbers, a lot of good cucumbers, okay? I'm going to tell you something. I don't really like cucumbers. <laughs> okay. I, I like pickles. Um, thank you. I, I like pickles. But um, I'm not a big cucumber fan. Um, and so we had all these plans to can all these cucumbers. And never really got around to it. So we had a lot of cucumbers. Okay. But going back to this. Jesus says, I am the vine. I'm the one connected to the soil. I'm the one who's the root. I'm the one connected to the root. You are the one who produces good fruit. And so we always need this in mind in what we are doing in, in our engagements that we, we are not doing this alone. Look at what he says. He says, no one remains in me and I in him produces uh, much fruit because you can do nothing without me. Christians, I want you to understand that. You can do nothing without without him now that 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 can go two ways if you think of this i'm capable of doing nothing without him or everything that i do he's there okay so and and both ways are correct and so if we say this as a christian i can do nothing without him everything that i do i can do nothing and and he's not there so um everything that i do he's there he's a part of it He's going to be there. But then there's also the side that I can do nothing without his strength. I can do nothing without being connected to him because that's the way it is. I cannot grow spiritually if I'm not growing spiritually in Jesus Christ. If my engagements, I can do in my engagements, I can do nothing without him being there. He's there with me. And so he says there's nothing without me if anyone does not remain in me he is thrown aside like a branch and he withers and so we get this this image that you know that that they'll be cut off those who who are not remaining in jesus will be cut off and thrown away gather them throw them into the fire and they are burned it goes go on to verse seven he says but if you remain in me and my words in you ask whatever you want and so we get this idea that that if if we are remaining in him we're doing nothing without him that he is the focal point of what we're doing 
then he will give to us. And so this brings us to 1 John chapter 2, verse 4. It says, the one who says, I have come to know him and yet doesn't keep his commands is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word truly in him, the love of God is made complete. This is how we know we are in him. The one who says he remains in him should walk just as he walked. Okay, so what Jesus calls us to do so that we produce good fruit is to walk as he walked. Okay, so do everything in in our in our base passage of Colossians. Do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus equals having Jesus as a focal point, having Jesus as where we're looking, having Jesus as to what we're looking to, where we are going. Okay, so uh, let's let let's go back uh, to to First John chapter two verse six. He says, "The one who says he remains in him, what will he do? He should walk as Jesus walked." So we have to start going. Okay, I know it's all it's like totally nineties. Okay, what would Jesus do? Right. So but that that's really kind of what we should be thinking. Right. OK. In this, I need to walk as Jesus walked. And, and that's not always easy. OK, that, that's not always easy to kind of kind of figure out because, you know, we're like, well, Jesus was never cut off in traffic. What would he do? You know, um, but uh, we, we, we have to kind of say, well, wh- where, where would Jesus go in this situation? What would he do when we have decisions to make, engagements to be a part of? We, we, we have to be open to what Jesus is doing in our life. We have to have that that focal point. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell a story of, of earlier this week. Um, if you were here Wednesday, you got to hear it. But uh, Jim and I, we were out visiting and uh, we, we just thought, well, where should we go? And, and so as, as we, we decide to go visit a few people, we're, we're driving by and there's a whole bunch of cows out on the road. And uh, so, so, so we call uh, Mr. G, okay? And we say, your cows are out on the road. I'm sorry, I'm calling him out, okay? He's not here. Where he... Is this cow still out? Okay, okay. Um, apparently, we didn't do as good as we thought, Jim, I mean... Okay, so we're like, your cows are out in the road. And, 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 and so we were able to help and, and, and get them back in. And, and, and I don't tell you that because, you know, that, that we were able to do some work, which was the highlight of my week, I'm telling you. Okay, wasn't spending time with Jim. It was completely working with the cows and, and getting them back in. Okay, so um, we, we, we were able to do that. But what, what we were doing is, is we realized something when we got back in the car. You know, we, we didn't know where we were going. We, I mean, we had decided where we were going. But when we first started, like, where should we go today? We, we, we didn't have a, a lot of y'all that said, no, I don't want you coming over to my house. So we had nowhere to go. OK. And so when we decided where we should go, we, we started heading that way. And I, I'm telling you, I, I think it was God ordained because who knows where those cows would be if we hadn't driven up that road? We don't know. OK, and then, and then we stayed and helped. And and and, and what, what I'm saying is that every day we have these small, minor things where we can see, wait, God is working. It, this is a God moment that this is this is God moving. And, and, and so if our focal point is on Jesus Christ, if we're centered on him, if we're focused on him, then then uh we, we should be doing everything to produce good fruit, to walk as he walked, to do what the things that he would do. I'm going to move on to my next point is so we have whatever we do should be done in Jesus. Then whatever we do should not be worthless. OK, Psalm 10 or sorry, Psalm 101 one says, I will sing a faithful love and justice. I will sing praise to you, Lord. I will pay attention to the way of integrity. When will you come to me? I will live with a heart of integrity in my house. I will not let anything worthless guide me. I hate the practice of transgression. It will not cling to me. When we are guided by worthless things, the fruit we produce is worthless. Okay. 
So I'm going to tell, I'm going to be honest with you. This is the one that this week, that as, as I was studying this, as I was looking over this, I was just like, this I'm going to be preaching to myself. Okay, because let's go back and look at Psalm 101. He says in verse 3, he says, I will not let anything worthless guide me. Okay, you, your, your version might say something along the lines of, I will not put any unclean thing in front of my eyes. Okay, and I'm going to tell you, Oh my goodness, what culture do we live in? That all the time I have unclean things. I have worthless things put in front of me. I, I will tell you what, what comes to mind. That there, there's a lot of things that, that come to mind when I start thinking what is worthless and what is an unclean thing that I might put in front of my eyes. And there are so many things. Now we could we could take the 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 route of well you know I'm not going to put um, explicit images in front of my eyes that are so easy to get now online. Okay, y'all followed me on that because I don't want to go. I, there's young ears around. Okay, or uh, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna subject myself to that kind of stuff. Okay, but when I think about it. I think, man, you know, there are a lot of television shows that are worthless. Oh, yeah, they may be funny. That they, they they might be, uh, uh, they might have some funny things to them. But when it all is said and done, how much worth was it? I tell you, there's a lot of... Uh, I, I come out of the generation that grew up on video games. I still like to play video games. But there's a lot of them that are worthless. That corrupt my mind. That change things. And it's an investment of my time. And, and what kind of time am I putting into these things that are worthless? Now look at this. I'm going to read this again. It's, it's there in your... Um, your outline, when we are guided by worthless things, the fruit we produce is worthless. Jonah chapter 2 verse 8 says, those who cling, sorry, those who cherish worthless idols abandon their faithful love. But as for me, I will sacrifice to you with a voice of thanksgiving. I will fulfill what I have vowed. Salvation belongs to the Lord. When we cherish things that are worthless, we give up on some of the reward that comes from God. I want you to understand that. Christian, I need you to understand that. That when we give up, when we follow worthless things, we are giving up heavenly reward. And I'm not talking about heaven and 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 my mansion built in the sky maybe mine oh if i do worthless things mine will be a bit smaller than yours i'm not talking about that i'm talking about what we receive here and now what we can gain from god here is a reward and we give up i i I want you i want to now i always read out of the um uh um christian standard bible but I want, I want to read what it says out of the NIV. Because it says, Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. That's the new NIV. The way I learned it from the NIV 84, it says, Those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. I started thinking about that. Like, wow. We give up. We're forfeiting. We're turning away from the things of God when we start focusing on things that are worthless. Now, is, is watching a movie bad? No, we can, we can watch movies. We, we can have meaningful interactions with each other by watching movies and, and talking to each other and having that time. What, what, what about video games? No, video games aren't bad. Okay, I can have a meaningful interaction uh, with someone who wants to play video, and we sit down, we talk, we play video games. We can do that. They're not bad. But what is my focus? Am I focused 
on worthless things? Have I taken some things and made them worthless, that they are worthless in my life because they produce nothing good in my life? And took, and then by doing that, turned away from the reward that I can receive from God. Turned away from the grace. Turned away from the mercy that I can receive from God. The good things that produce good fruit. And so what I want you to kind of say is, is are these things good for me? Now, there, there are certain, I, I won't go into it, but there, um, the, there, there was a particular television show that me and my wife like to watch. Okay? And, and if I said it, you guys would go, oh my goodness, you watched that? Okay, I'm not going to tell you what it is. Okay? But we watched it. And both of us began to realize because we okay so there's this thing called binge watching okay now we're not absolute like sit down for six hours and watch a television show okay we, we may watch like two in a row okay so we, we we keep that up and uh we would be like at the at the end of the night we'd be just all like oh my goodness that was that, that, that got my heart pounding or, or that got me thinking of things that I shouldn't be thinking. And we got to this point where we're like, you know, it's, it's pulling us away and it's pulling us towards worthless things. And so we said, we, we've got to give this up. We've got to get it out because we don't want to chase worthlessness. We want to chase the reward of Jesus Christ. And like I said last week, I don't think that just investing some time in in yourself or or taking a little break from the things that are going on is wrong. But is our focus on those things or is our focus on Jesus Christ? And when our focus is on those things, those things are worthless. The reward from Jesus is what will bring good fruit in our lives. The third and, and final point that I'm going to make is uh, when it comes to investing uh, in, in our engagements and, and what we do, what we should do, what we, what we do should be an investment of our time. So it goes back to that time. So we're investing our time. We talked about how we spend our time, and now we're going to talk about the investment of time. So what we do should be an investment of of our time. Colossians chapter 4 verse 5 it says, "Act wisely towards outsiders, making the most of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you should answer each person." When we invest our time in the name of Jesus, we will have engagements for his name's sake. When we invest our time in the name of Jesus, we will have engagements for his namesake. So here's the question. Do you want opportunity to meet with people for the name of Jesus? Do do you want to go out into this world and share the gospel. So we have to ask that of ourselves as Christians. If we want it, we need to invest in it. Invest our time. Look at what he says. Let's go back to this passage of scripture. He says, act wisely towards outsiders. Okay? Because they, they don't understand they don't understand this. There are people outside today who are working whether personally on their own house or they're at work, going, I do not understand those people sitting at church. They're not getting anything done. They're giving up two hours of their morning, prime time to mow the lawn or prime time to make some money. And they don't understand it. There are people who don't. I've talked with these people that are like, I, I, I had a conversation with a guy. I invited him to church. And he, he told me, he just flat out told me, I don't have time for church. I can make money. Because he doesn't understand 
why you would give up your time. See, this is an investment that you're making, hopefully. I mean, it all depends on the guy that's feeding you, I guess. That's me. Thank you. I'm glad you got it. Everybody else is like, what? Okay. But he says, act wisely towards outsiders, making the most of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer each person. So here's a question for you. Do you know how to answer each person? You might be sitting there going, no. Then let me ask you this. If you said no, are you investing time to find out? Are we investing time? Are, 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 are we investing the time so that we can have the engagements? So that we can have opportunity to share the gospel? Because I'm going to tell you, it is not just my responsibility to share the gospel. It's not just Jim's responsibility to share the gospel. It's your responsibility to share the gospel. Are you investing time? First Peter chapter 3, verse 15 says, But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. What does he say to us? Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Always be prepared. What is he saying? I've got divine appointments for you. Invest your time so that you can have those divine appointments. So that you may have an opportunity to share the gospel. I'll tell you a a, a story that uh, my, my wife and I have, that uh, when, when we were dating, we went to the state fair in Tulsa. That was not an investment in the gospel, I'll tell you that. Okay? We were just going out to have fun at the state fair. Is that wrong? I told you last week, I don't think it's wrong. Okay? To have a good time. But God had other plans. Because as we were leaving... I was wearing a shirt that said Yahweh on it. Okay, and that's all it said, Yahweh. Okay, and as we were leaving, a lady stopped us and said, I like your shirt. I said, thank you. And we were able to engage in a conversation, and then she had questions. Because I, she said, well, what are you? I said, well, I'm a Baptist. And uh, so then she had questions. And I can't go into all the details of those questions and and, and what we talked about, but she was not anywhere close to the kingdom of God. Okay, she was chasing spiritualism through Wiccan and uh, and and that sort of uh, what they they believe through nature and things like that, but had a belief of God, but was way far away from the kingdom of God. I was not. I did not go to the state fair to do that. But God says, I have something else for you. I have, I'm going to put some people in your path. And I start to realize God does this to me a lot. I hope he does it to you. But you have to invest in that opportunity for that to happen. That there are going to be people who are going to notice something about you. Maybe you have a Jesus fish on your car and they just ask you, what is that? Well, it's an ichthus. Let me tell you what it means. And, and they might have questions. Oh, what kind of God would die on a cross? That doesn't make sense. Are you prepared to answer? Why, why, why do you people sit on a Sunday morning? Why, 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 why would you do that? Are you prepared to answer? See, we have to invest in knowing the, 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 the answers and, and being able. And, and how do we invest in that? It's real easy. How do we invest in that? We read the Word. 
we read the scripture. And, and, and we'll know. Well, why is it, why would a God die? Because for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. He wants you to live forever with him. That's why. And we can, we can, we, when we study the word and when we invest our time so that we can have the engagement, so that we can have meaningful engagements that produce fruit. Deuteronomy 10, 12 says, Now Israel, what does the Lord require from you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and love him, and to serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and to keep the Lord's commandments and his statutes, which I am commanding you today for your good. What is God looking for in our engagements? What God is looking for in our engagements is that we fear him and have our hearts and souls set on following him. See, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I, I take vacations. I take trips. I do fun things with my children. We like to go to the science museum. We like to go to the zoo. Okay? I get to do those things at school. Okay? We, we, we like to do these things. But as I see what God does, I start to go, am I going to have a moment where God is going to put somebody in my path? And am I prepared for it? Am I prepared to what God will just spring up on me? And, uh, you know, we think, well, does God do that? You know, one day Jesus was tired. He sat down. His disciples said, are you hungry? And he's like, yeah, I'm hungry. Let us go get food. They leave. Jesus is sitting there all by himself. And a lady walks up. And what is she craving? Spiritual water. And that's what Jesus gives her. Yes, divine appointments happen. I hope they happen to you. I hope they happen to you on a regular basis. That you can look around and you can say, man, God God was moving me there. I, I didn't understand how to answer. And God put somebody in front of me who asked me a question. I didn't understand. I need to prepare. I need to be ready for the battle. Ready to go out into this war. And so, what is God looking for? Look, He just wants our hearts and souls sold out to Him. Does that mean I have to invest every waking moment in emissions and giving and sacrificing everything that I have? I don't think that that's what God has called us to do. Remember, Peter, he still continued to fish throughout Jesus' ministry. Was every waking moment about making sure that he was praying and making sure that he was thinking strategies on how to accomplish the mission? I don't think so. See, if that's the way it was, then he wasn't relying on God very much. We have to allow God to work, God to move in our lives. Be ready for those engagements that can be meaningful. And you'll have meaningful engagements if you put down the worthless things and you focus on God and that your heart and soul is sold out to him. We're going to pray. We're going to take Lord's Supper. Um, and, and, and so we'll, we'll do this as quickly as possible. I'm just going to give you just a moment. I'm going to have them come and play. And, and we're just going to play for just a moment and have you respond to the word. For just a moment in silent prayer, have that conversation with God. Just a few moments because we're going to take Lord's Supper.
Father God, we thank you for all that you do. I thank you for a congregation that is willing to say, God, help us be those that will go out into the world and have you put people in our path, Lord. We thank you and praise you for all that you do. In your son's precious name, amen. You may be seated. If I could call those who who are going to help. I do want to tell you that uh, we, uh, we practice an open communion, open Lord's Supper in the sense that um, that uh, if you're a believer here today and you've given your life to Jesus Christ, then uh, you're more than welcome to partake. Uh, if you have not, or if you have young children with you who have not, um, and, and we, we ask that you just uh, refrain. If you've never, no one's going to judge you. No one's going to uh, come and report to me who who refrained. Uh, but uh, just if you uh, uh, if if you have not, then we ask that you, that you refrain. But if you have made the Lord uh, Lord of your life, then we ask that you you can partake. And so uh, we're going to uh, continue in Lord's Supper. Would you uh, open us in a word of prayer for Lord's Supper? Father, we just come before you, Lord, as we bow now as we look, look upon the sins of the Jordan. Let the, let the bread and the, and the drink, Lord, in their representative fashion, call to mind the depth of your love for us, call to mind the depth of your sacrifice for us, and certainly call to mind, Lord, your love for us. So take these moments, mold our hearts, be in our minds, and fill us with your love. Let your presence be, be felt and known among us. That we truly can say we're two or three are gathered in my name, there I am also. That we stand, we sit, we participate in the very presence of God Almighty. So let our hearts be filled. For it's in Christ's blessed name we pray.
Dawson, would you like to uh, bless the the element? Lord Jesus, thanks for this uh, time that we get to gather together. I pray, Lord, you just be with us as we take this. Uh, like Jim said, just help us to remember what what it really means and what it represents. Um, God, that we could remember your body and all the suffering that you went through. And Lord, that you rose again on the third day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
works better. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Father God, we thank you for all that you do for us. We ask that you bless this time. And we ask that you send us into the world. Thank you. We praise you. Amen. If you would stand, I'm going to ask Jim to close us in a word of prayer. And if you have, uh, if you if you've made any sort of decision here today, I'd love to talk with you, um, and, and to to share with you and and to just be a part of uh, what God is doing in your life. Jim, if you have any other announcements, we have visitors. Shake some hands.